In this video, we will talk about the uh, allowance method in uh, writing off um, uh, bad debt expenses. Now, in the, in the previous video, we spoke about the direct method. Now, the difference between the direct method and the allowance method, which we will discuss in this video, is the direct method we waited until we gave up waiting for the amount to be paid. So we, we didn't write off the amount at the beginning. It's only all the way at the end when we knew it's not going to be collected. But with the allowance method, we're not going to wait until we are 100% sure that it's not going to be collected. We will record that at the year end. And the reason for that is um, we want to have the match between the 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 revenue that we uh, recorded for a sale or a service that we provided to a customer and the bad debt expense that is associated with it in the same period of time. So those two revenue and the expense, bad debt expense, have to be recorded in the same period of time. That's, that's based on the matching principle. Um, with the direct method, you might have the revenue in, for example, 2016, and then by the time you gave up and recorded the bad expense, that would be already in 2017. So in two different financial statements, 2016, 2017, the revenue will be in the 2016, and the and the expense, the bad expense associated with that will show up in the 2017 income statement. So it's not fair for the financial statements. You want those two revenue and expense showing up in the same income statement for the same year. That's the reason why we have to do the adjustment. That's another adjustment. Um, that we have to do at the year end. And because we're not yet 100% sure that the customer will pay or not, we have to make an estimate. So with the allowance method, there's no specific amount that we know is not going to be collected. It's, there will be an estimate for an amount that we think it's not going to be uncollectible. And then it will be a little bit different when we record the journals for it using the allowance method. Now with the allowance method, there are two methods um, well, three methods to calculate the uh, estimated amount of uh, uncollectible uh, amounts. Um, the first one is the percentage of sales. That's what we'll cover in this video. And the next two videos, we'll cover the other two methods, which is the uh, uh, percent of receivable. And the third one is the aging of receivable method. OK, percent of, of sales methods. First of all, we have to, um, to, we have to look at how much sales we did this year. Sometimes we need to, it depends on the company, sometimes we need to look at the total amount of sales, sometimes we need to look at the total amount of credit sales only. Not all the sales, just the amount of sales that was sold on account, okay? Um, in our video, let's consider that the credit sales, only the sales that was on credit for the, the whole year, let's say that was um, $60,000, I'll do that here. $60,000, and then we estimated based on the history, based on um, um, research that we did. I mean, the, the percentage of the sales amount, it's, it's decided, it's determined based on different ways, you know, either history or uh, research that we did, or we ask as experts. So let's say we came up with 0.5%. Um, uh, Okay, so basically we just multiply that by the 60,000 and then we will come up with um, $300 and that will be our estimated amount of uh, uncollectible, the unco estimated uncollectible amount for the year. Now, how do we record that? It's um, just like the direct write-off in terms of the debit, we, we just have to um, uh, debit um, bad debt expense, $300. And in the credit, we're not going to credit accounts receivable like the direct method because we're not directly transferring that amount from receivable to the bad debt expense. Instead, we're going to come up with a new account that we've never uh, seen before, it's called the allowance for doubtful accounts. Allowance for doubtful accounts, or sometimes they call it uh, allowance for bad debts. I think in your textbook it's called allowance for bad debts. 
uh, $300. Now, where do we classify that account? It's classified in the um, balance sheet as a contra accounts receivable. It's a contra asset. Uh, remember, contra asset is always going to have a credit balance account, uh, the credit balance. So um, it, it's going to decrease the net accounts receivable. So in our balance sheet, let's look at the balance sheet. Okay, in the balance sheet under the assets, we're going to have all the asset accounts, and one of them is the accounts receivable. Okay, so let's say that we have, um, uh, let's say, $60,000 accounts receivable, all right? And then underneath that, we're going to have the allowance for a doubtful account. I'm just going to say AFDA, uh, $300, and it's a contra receivable with a credit balance. So credit under the assets, it's always going to be a negative amount. We're going to put that in parentheses because it's negative. And then your net accounts receivable is going to be 59000 Seven hundred. So, we're only expecting to collect from customers fifty nine seven hundred. Although the customer owes uh, owe us sixty thousand, we're gonna expect less than the sixty because we think that there is a portion of that sixty thousand that will be uncollectible. So that's how you want to show it in your um, balance sheet. We're kind of showing the details: how much they owe us, how much we expect not to collect, and how much will be the net receivable, the more realistic amount to collect. And that's uh, that, that's um, this. It's a good method to show the users how much customers owe and how much we expect to collect in in reality. Okay, um, so there will be no accounts receivable in the credit. There will be allowance for that full account. All right, and then later on in the future, if um, if we think that. Uh, we're 100% sure that that amount is not going to be collected. Once we get to a point that it's not going to be collected, then you're going to do the write-off. Here, we're not writing off yet. We're just recording budget expense. But to write it off completely, it means we're going to take it away from accounts receivable. So at that time, which might be any time, can be next year, but it's fine because I'm not going to record bad debt expense again. It has been already recorded in 2016, the same, same uh, period of time where we recorded the revenue initially. So no problem by that. And then, by the way, that was on December 31st of that year. And that's the whole point, is to have it recorded in the same year um, that we recorded the revenue. Uh, so to do the write-off, we're going to debit um, allowance for the actual account because we don't need to have that amount there anymore. No reason to keep it there anymore because it's uh, it's going to be taken away from accounts receivable, and then you credit accounts receivable for $300. That's how you do the write-off when you're 100% sure that you're not going to collect it. We're not going to do bad debt expense again because that has been recorded before, um, although it was just an estimate. okay. And even if you do the write-off, your net receivable is not actually going to change, and then your income statement is not going to change because there's no expense there. And here, if we change that to, um, if we do the write-off, that means receivable is going down to 59700 um, And then no more AFDA because it's gone. We debited that. So the net receivable is still the same. So all we did is just to write it off. It's not going to change my total and net receivable. So it's not going to change my total assets overall. Um, and that's the whole point because the bad debt expense was recorded before and I'm not doing that again. That will change the assets and the income statement when, when it's being recorded, but not when you just do the write-off. In the next video, we'll talk about the uh, the other two methods.